Welcome. Today we're going to see a series of protectionism measures. We're going to see how to represent a tariff diagram and its associated welfare laws, the same thing for the quotas, as well as then discussing the pros and cons of each of these two type of methods, uh, these two methods of protectionism. We start with a normal supply and demand diagram for a country in Turkey, where the equilibrium price is P1 and the demand is Q1. We introduce international economics by adding the world supply. We assume in this case that the world supply is more competitive than our local firms in general, and therefore the world price is below our equilibrium price. At this PW price, we will be producing Q2 and we will be consuming Q3. This distance between Q2 and Q3 in microeconomics will be considered a shortage which is only possible in the short run, but in the long run, we will be tending to go back to P1 and Q1. Because we are in international economics, this distance is simply referred to as being the imports before the tariffs. And we can represent in this diagram as well the consumer surplus and the producer surplus, which are the distance between the demand and the price, PW, and the supply and the price, PW. Let's suppose that our government wants to reduce the amount of imports. One way it can do this is by introducing a tariff. A tariff is a tax on imports. Now, because it's a tax, we will be affecting the cost of production of the firms. Which firms? Only the importing firms, because it's a tax only on imports. As such, we will be increasing the cost of production by as much as the unit tax. This is represented by an upward shift of the world supply. Again, only the world supply because we're only changing the cost of production of foreign importing firms. At this new world supply with the new price, we will be now producing Q4 and consuming Q5, and therefore it is clear from this diagram that the imports have indeed fallen. How do we see from this diagram how society at large is doing. First thing that we need to do is name all the areas in the diagram. It is possible to shade the different areas, but I don't recommend doing this because in the actual exam you can only use blue pen, black pen, and pencil for the diagrams. Now, it, this can become therefore quite messy. It's much more clear if you use uh, the areas to represent the changes. In this case, for the consumer surplus, we can see that in the past, all the areas comprised A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, and I, as seen before, was the consumer surplus before the tariff. Our consumer surplus has fallen significantly. It only comprises now A, B, C, and D, because the price has also increased a lot, therefore the distance between the demand curve and the new price has also reduced. The producer surplus has increased from J to J and E. This has increased and recovered some of the area lost by the consumer. Now the question is, what happens with F, G, H and I, which is what the consumers also lost? Part of this will be recovered by the government. How much of it? Because we're taxing imports, the first thing we need to uh, measure in here is how many imports. And that's what's given by the distance between Q4 and Q5. We are taxing each of these unit in imports from a unit tax. And this was given by the distance between the old world supply and the new world supply. This multiplication of quantity times price gives us this rectangle, which is J and H, and that's the new government revenue. As a result, we can identify in this diagram that F and I is welfare loss for society because the consumers lost this consumer surplus and nobody else regained it back. We're going to move now to the quotas and we can represent again the same diagram showing now uh, the same amount of imports from Q2 to Q3. Now the government wants to reduce the amount of imports by using quotas. Quotas is not a tax. Quotas is a literal reduction or um, of imports by establishing a restriction on the amount of units that can enter the country. We can set as a government a limit and therefore we can ourselves 
um, identify what is the amount of imports that we want in this case q4 to q5 a government can decide whether it restricts through price with tariffs or with uh, quantity through quotas but no government can do both things at the same time it's only one thing or the other at q4 q5 we measure this by the distance between the demand and the supply at that amount of quantity imported and this gives us a new price equilibrium in our country. We also need to extend the supply curve further, our local supply. Why? Because this means that because we have a limit of imports, if there was a change in the demand curve, we will have to um, produce more, our country will be producing more, because uh, after that point, there simply cannot be more imports coming into our country. We can represent in this diagram again the net welfare loss. We start in the same way, naming all the areas, and equally, we can represent in here the same thing as before, but there is a big difference. G and H was the government revenue from the tariff. However, a quota does not raise any government revenue because it's not a tax. Therefore, G and H are lost, and therefore the net welfare loss for society is much bigger than before. It comprises not just the triangles F and I, but also what the government is no longer earning through the increase in, tariff, in tariffs. How do these two um, measures compare then? Well, the main thing about tariffs, its main positive uh, is the fact that it does earn the government some revenue. This revenue could, for instance, be used to pay for other forms of protectionism, such as subsidies to some of our industries. Quotas, on the other hand, generate a much larger welfare loss because there is no government revenue. On the other hand, quotas are better to deal with the notion of price elasticity of demand. Because tariffs are a tax on imports, we are relying uh, to, reduce, to reduce our amount of imports in the case of a tariff, we are relying on the fact that if we increase the cost of production for foreign importers, then the price will go up and therefore our people will buy less. But this is not the case if we are taxing highly price inelastic goods. Quotas, on the other hand, don't suffer any of these issues because quotas is a literal restriction of the amount of imports that can get into the country. In addition, um, tariffs, the amount of imports that we have into a country resulting from a tariff can be changing on a daily basis even. Because we are restricting the, uh, the, the price, if the price of a good changes a lot, that means that our imports will also be changing a lot. Say, for example, that there is a new discovery of an oil de deposit in another country. If this happens, then there, the, the cost of production for the world supply of oil will probably decrease, and this means that the world price will fall, and this means that our imports will be increasing once again. With quotas, none of these things happen because we are restricting the amount of import into our country. So overall, quotas is a far better method if the aim of a government is to just restrict the amount of imports into the country. However, they do lead to a much larger loss, a welfare loss. So how do we decide between one or the other? Generally speaking, Tariffs will be better for goods that are PED elastic or relatively elastic and import quotas will be better for goods that are PED inelastic. To finish off, I'm going to show this diagram, which is a question that is recurrent by some students. What happens if we set a tariff that is so high that the new world price sets above our equilibrium price? Well, this means that we are exporting because now we are supplying Q5 and we are demanding Q4. And the answer is no, we will not because we are only setting a tariff on the imports into our country. But we are not changing 
the cost of production for foreign firms in foreign countries. We cannot force citizens in other countries to buy our goods because we set a tax on their own goods. So if we set a tariff that is much higher than P1, all this means is that we will not be importing anything, but we will not be exporting either. So this distance between Q4 and Q5 does not mean anything in this case. On the other hand, setting a tariff that is above our equilibrium price does mean that in the case, in the event that there is a shock in the supply and for instance the world supply falls because their cost of production are falling, we will still have a, mar a margin of safety and we will still be stopping uh, imports into the country, which will solve to an extent the issues on volatility. I hope you enjoyed the video. Uh, please like and or subscribe. Thank you very much.